Okay, I got your materials. And okay. let's talk about similarity for a moment. Okay. These two triangles are similar because they have the same three angles. And what that means is that corresponding sides are proportional. In other words, 9 is to 3 as 15 is to 5. 9 is to 3 as 15 is to 5 as 12 is to 4. Okay? Okay. So you can always say that corresponding parts are proportional. Whatever the ratio is between a corresponding side, that same ratio is going to be in effect. But there's something else that's very interesting about similar triangles, and that is the ratio within the triangle. In other words, that relative to that side, in other words, the short side relative to the hypotenuse, is also equal to that divided by that. So it's not only ratios between the triangles that are the same, but it's ratios within the triangles are also <coughs> the same. Okay. <coughs> because it can be a little confusing when you discover on your own that, wow, all these ratios are the same no matter whether I go triangle to triangle or within one triangle alone. Mm -hmm. You want to start with four? Yeah. So the answer always lies in coming up with ratios. What is the big triangle to little triangle similarity ratio? Is that, is, that a, is that a word that you use at Chatfield, similarity ratio? Yeah, we just use ratio. We don't put similarity in front of it, but, I mean, okay. same thing. Okay. Well, it's the linear ratio, and, and there is a reason to put a word in front of it because the area ratio, the area of this triangle relative to that triangle, is not the same ratio. And in yeah. fact, I think the second page that you sent me has to do with surface areas and volumes, and, and it, it, it's all about how the linear ratio is not the same as the area ratio, and it's not the same as the volume ratio. So okay. it is kind of important to understand what kind of ratio we're talking about here. Now, a term yeah. I've heard used a lot is the similarity ratio. But what they really mean is what is the proportional side ratio between this triangle and this triangle? Okay, it would be 16 over 6. What's that equal to in terms of what they're asking about? They want to know what A is and B. Um, like... Wait, I'm confused on what it is. Oh. Oh, and then it would be um, 8 over B, or B over 8. Well, yeah. I mean, let's do these one at a time. Okay. okay. So A, solving for A is just cross-multiplying. And then dividing. So A is 8. No. 16 doesn't go into that eight times, does it? No. No. Goes in seven and a half. No, seven and six sixteenths. Seven and three eighths, I believe. Is that right? No, that's not right either. What is it? Um, if it goes in there six, that's 96, eight remaining, six and a half. So A is six and a half. Okay. Okay. Now let's solve separately for B. Okay. 
it's still the same proportion. In other words, that still has to be the same proportion. So what is that ratio equal to? Um, uh, B over 8. And how do I solve this for B? You would, um, let's see, so 16. It'd be, um... What's the next step? Do you cross multiply or do you just multiply both sides by 8? You cross multiply? Notice that if I cross multiply, I still have another step to do. Yeah. I gotta divide by six. Uh-huh. What if I just multiply both sides by eight? Oh they don't even okay, that makes That's sense. only one step. Now you still have to simplify that. But yeah. that actually simplifies rather easily. That becomes four, that becomes three. And you end up with 64 thirds equals B. So I'm coming across this a lot lately where everybody wants to cross multiply as soon as you have a fraction equals a fraction. And it's yeah. not always the best thing to do. In other words, if your variable is in the numerator, then it actually is one step longer. Okay. The variable is in the denominator. If it was this, then it would be a different story. Now I cannot solve for b in one step. I have to cross multiply and divide both sides by 16. But okay. you know, it's worth noticing whether your variable is in the numerator or the denominator. All right. Number five. A little tougher. Why? Because we cannot see the orientation. Yeah. In other words, they tell us that this triangle is similar to this triangle, but which angles are equal? How do we tell? Which angles are uh, congruent? Is what I should have said. Um, S and T are congruent. Exactly. In other words, you have to read the uh, the title on the triangle. So, if the the best way maybe to handle this is to draw it as two separate triangles. Okay. S W T. And over here, must look the same because it's similar. And this must be, well, let's see, you said S was the same as T, so that's got to be T there. W, hmm. Hold on. T, W, A. Yeah, it, it's... Notice that angle W is not the same in both cases. In this triangle, that's angle W. In this triangle, that's angle W. Different. Mm -hmm. But if S is similar to T, and so let's say that S is congruent, actually, to T, what other angle is congruent? Um... It's W congruent. W. So it'd be actually no. W is T. Not. In other words, you decided that S was congruent to T because S was the first letter, correct? Oh yeah, so it'd be. So A is congruent to W. Yeah. And T is congruent to W. Now, how can that be? It's because this W is not the same as this W. In other words, okay. this W is actually angle SWT, and this W is angle TWA. Okay? okay? But for purposes of drawing it, this separates the two so that we can say that that angle is equal to that angle, that angle is equal to that angle. That angle is equal to this angle. 
and T is equal to this angle. Okay? Okay. Now, to go from here, between S and T is 5. Between S and W is 8. And between T and W is 10. So, what is the corresponding side in the bigger triangle to SW? Okay, so to, from SW, it would be um, WA. Well, notice that SW comes between the angles that have a single hash mark and a double hash mark. Oh, so it'd be oh. WT. Well, it'd be TA. Oh, okay. This line right here comes between the single hash mark and the double hash mark. Remember, oh, okay. the, remember okay. the W's are not congruent here. Yeah. They did this intentionally to throw us off. But that's okay. Um, so the side of the bigger triangle that is the corresponding side of the smaller triangle must be that side right there to the 8. Okay? Yeah. Well, what's the side that's labeled over here is the side between the single hash mark and the triple hash mark, that's that side. What, okay. What's my similarity ratio between these two triangles? Uh, 10 to 8. 10 to 5. Oh, to 5, because I keep forgetting about it. Yeah, 10 to 5. In other words, I did not draw these properly. I did not draw them in the way that they're not aligned properly. Notice that this angle is equal to this angle, but this angle is equal to that angle down there. And this okay. angle is equal to that angle up there. So if you want yeah. to figure out corresponding sides of the triangle, look to the side between the angles that you know are corresponding. Okay. In other words, I can see that this side between the single and the triple is 5, and this side between the single and the triple is 10. Therefore, everything is twice. Okay. Okay, so what is TA? So that would be 16. Good. And... And then um, WT would be 5? W right now. Well, we don't have it. No, we don't have it, do we? Uh -uh. Um, we have no way of figuring it out. Which means I did something wrong here. Okay. But I can't imagine what it was because they need to give us four numbers. In other words, unless we have a corresponding side to another corresponding side, we can't figure out the similarity ratio. So the similarity ratio has to be either 10 fifths or 10 eighths, right? Yeah. All right, well based on the way I interpreted their title, it seems to me that ST has to be the same side as TW. Yeah. But even if I have it wrong, even if SW is the same side as TW, we're still missing a side. We're still missing a sign. I'm still not sure how we're going to solve for that third side. In other words, they did not give us, did I maybe not have enough of this thing on display here? <laughs> Let me look at the whole page here. Yeah, no, that's all of it. All of it. Hmm. Now, my terminology is right, is it not? Uh, this is one thing I'm a little questionable about. When they say triangle STW is similar to triangle TWA, 
that means that angle S is the same as angle T. Yeah. Angle T is the same as angle W. Yeah. And angle W is the same as angle A. Yeah. Well, that's what I did. In other words, there's angle S. It's the same as angle T. Angle T is the same as angle W. They're both triplets. And angle W on the smaller triangle is the same as angle A on the bigger triangle. Hold on a moment. I'm thinking. All right. Ah. What's this side right here? WT. Uh-huh. 10. Yeah, on both triangles. That's um, what I'm saying. In other words, that's 10. But then D would be 20? Yeah. In other words, there is one side that is common to both triangles. Yeah. And that's our fourth dimension that we needed. Because you okay, kind of need four dimensions to solve similar triangles. You need yeah. two to establish the similarity ratio, and then the other two to figure out what the sides are. Yeah, that makes sense. All right. Let's look at C. The only thing we need to divide or solve for is E. Um, can I, I think I'm good on 6 and 7. Can we move down to 8? Because I'm confused on that one as well. Sure. Thank you. Oh, okay. <laughs> one of these. Everybody loves these. I mean, teachers do. <laughs> These are long problems. This is probably about a 12-minute problem. Okay. Everything that we're going to need to answer here, it's kind of based on parallel lines, mid-segments, but mainly similar triangles. Notice, okay. first of all, that, that triangle is similar to every other triangle you see. Okay. Why? Because all of these lines are parallel. Because all of those lines are parallel, that angle, can you see where my cursor is pointed? Yes, yeah. It's the same as that angle, which is the same as that angle, that angle, and that angle. Okay. On the other side, we have this transversal, which means that angle is the same as that angle, that angle, that angle, and that angle. And all of the triangles have that angle in common. Okay. So all one, two, three, four, five triangles. We're looking at five triangles. They're all similar. Yes, yeah. So let's figure out a similar, and this is going to be easier because it's fully oriented for us. What is the similarity ratio? Okay. Um. Between... Triangle one and triangle two. Let, let's number let's number the top triangle as one, and then this triangle as two, and this okay. triangle as three, and so forth. So we have okay. five triangles. Between triangle one and triangle two, what is the similarity ratio? Um. So it'd be twelve. Or 18 to 12? Yes. You know, I like always having numbers bigger than 1. So I would rather say 18 to 12 than 12 to 18. Either is proper, but it's just easier to deal with numbers greater than 1 rather than less than 1, I think. Yeah. So what is W? Um... So it'd be W over 8, and uh, let's see. But so W over 8 has to equal what? Uh, 3 ha halves. 
Okay, solve that. Okay. Okay. What is M equal to? Okay. Uh, now, when you're doing me. when you're doing portions like this, it's also um well let me think for a second. Nine plus M is to eight. Now eh, let's go is to nine. As what? Um, as. What's the similarity three, ratio? Three halves. That's why figuring out that similarity ratio is is the first step you always want to do. Because you can take that similarity ratio and now apply it throughout the entire problem. Well, no, I'm sorry. Just as long as we're dealing with triangle number two, we can use it. Okay. We're not going to be able to use it for the others. We're going to have a different similarity ratio for triangle one versus triangle three. Okay. Okay. Can you solve this okay? Yes. Yeah. All right. Let's not spend any more time on that. Let's look at the next letter we can solve for. We solved for W. We solved for M. Now let's yeah. look at N. Well, okay. N is part of triangle three. What's the similarity ratio between triangle three? And notice that triangle one is the only one we have all three dimensions on. Yeah. Now we happen to have all three dimensions on triangle two, but, you know, we might as well stick with triangle one as our base. Okay. So give me some ratios. What can you say about triangle three versus triangle one? Um, well, the ratio is 12 to nine. Okay. Now let's be careful here. Let's make sure we distinguish between ratios within the triangle oh, so or I forgot between the triangles. Okay. Let's not mix it up because that's where it can get confusing. Okay. What is this side and what is this side? So um, 12 is to what? 12 is to N. 12 is to 18 plus N. Okay. Notice yeah, okay. that the side from there to there is 18 plus N. Okay. That okay. makes sense. That's 12. So that's yeah. our similarity ratio. That side versus that side. Okay. Okay. And we know that that has to be... Well, I guess we have to go back and take what we came up with for M. Okay. What did what did M turn out to be? Um the fraction. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Our equation was nine plus M over nine equals three halves. Bigger to the smaller equals the bigger to the smaller. Okay. So that gave us 18 plus 2m equals 27. 2m equals 9. m equals 4 and a half. Well, we kind of need that because... We can't look at triangle number three without knowing M. Yeah. Okay. In other words, we're still going to use the ratio of 12 is to 18 plus N. That's the similarity ratio between the small first triangle and the bigger triangle number three. Mm-hmm. 
and that is equal to the small side of that versus the big side of that, which is 9 plus 4.5 plus 12, 25.5. That means you can solve for N. Okay. And we also know that that's now the new similarity ratio between triangle 1 and triangle 3. Okay. Okay. So to solve for X, we would say 9. And one way to... Get rid of that fraction as double top and bottom. So 18 is to 51 is the same ratio. So that's okay. really our similarity ratio. And now I can say that that's the same as 8 is to what? Uh, X. Now you can solve that easily. Okay, now we got to talk about triangle one and triangle four. Okay. Um, again, comparing these two is going to require us to know what N is and M. So, yes. in other words, you, you want to be filling these in over here as we're doing this. Yeah. And then you kind of get the idea as to how we're going to finish the whole thing? Yes, yeah, it makes sense now. Just Always, the, the biggest thing to remember is that when you say similarity ratio, you're talking between the triangles, not within the triangles. Okay. There was actually nothing wrong with you making that ratio 12 is to 9. I could have said 12 is to 9 as 18 is to 9 plus M, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. In other words, you can use those within a single triangle ratio. That has to be the same ratio in all of these triangles, but it's not called the similarity ratio. That would be called the ratio okay. between that side and that side. A similarity okay. ratio is the ratio of the corresponding side to this corresponding side or this corresponding side or whatever is the case. So okay. with similar triangles, always remember that it, all of these ratios are valid, but you don't want to mix them and match them when you're doing a problem like this because you'll, you'll end up making a mistake. If you ended up with a similarity ratio of 12 to 9, and then you tried to solve N based on the similarity ratio, it wouldn't be right. Yeah. All right. Got any last questions? No, nope, I think that's all. Thank you. Okay, Kristen. I'll talk to you next time. Have a good one. All right, you too. Bye-bye.